In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Christ is in our midst. As we hear in today's Gospel reading, which is the Gospel reading of the publican and the Pharisee, um, we're also reminded of the fact that today is the beginning of the Triodion period, which is the pre-Lenten period, and Lent will start in just a, a few weeks. But this particular reading today and the hymns that are sung today are shifting us from the regular cycle of the year to the part of the year where we contemplate and ask, uh, contemplate our sinfulness and ask for forgiveness and live a repentant life. The gospel reading today in the demeanor in church that we hear specifically in the publican and the Pharisee, we hear one person who goes and justifies himself and the other that is beyond himself uh, with uh, sadness of his sinfulness. And really, when we look at the church as a whole and we look at why we're here and what we do when we're here, we can be a range of, of being from the point of being embarrassed about our sins in front of God to being completely distracted, to being judgmental, to being... Uh, proud, arrogant, uh, ownered ownership of our particular area in the church, and I won't move over because this is my spot, or I'm, I don't want um, a particular uh, thing to happen in church because this is the way I like it, or even when we think about what we look at in church, we might be looking across at someone else and saying, wow, I Look at that coat that looks funny or they, why did they wear that fancy coat or who knows where our minds can go. And really when we read St. Theophan the recluse and we hear about his guidance of how we're supposed to be in church, we are supposed to put ourselves in the presence of God and putting ourselves in the presence of God means that we lose track of all the other things around us and we come into a mental and physical and spiritual encounter with God, where we come to the point of placing ourselves before God. And when we place ourselves before God, what can we say or do that would justify ourselves? What can we say to God, the one who is all holy, sinless, ever righteousness, the good judge? And then if we truly put ourselves in a state before him, how can any of us stand how can anybody come before God in self-justification or righteousness when we all have done things that would keep us out of the kingdom of heaven? If heaven is that place that we all understand that is all holy beyond any stain, then our mere presence in the kingdom of heaven would stain it without God's mercy, forgiveness, and looking past our many transgressions and sins. So we look at this gospel reading today and we hear the man justifying himself and saying, I thank God I'm not like that other person. And how many times have we heard that? Or maybe even said it. Boy, I'm, not, I'm glad I'm not like them. Or we even say that too with people who are ill. And it might come across as, as um, a, you know, a kind thing to say. Some people will say, you know, Father, I... I got a slip disc in my back, but thank God I'm not like so-and-so. They got, you know, stage four cancer or whatever the case. And it becomes this justification even in that to look at another person and say, I'm glad I'm not as bad as they are. So it can go across the board from illness to successes. We can look at other people and judge them in an instant. But what does this gospel reading call us to do, especially during this time of year? It calls us to forget about looking at other people and judging and comparing ourselves to others and looking at ourselves as God would see us. And if we truly understand who God is, when he sees us, he's going to see someone who's broken, someone who's wrestling, someone who falls, someone who's sinful, someone who is weak. And when we come into that presence of God, we need to be the one who comes before him and says, Lord, forgive me the sinner to focus our prayers on us and not justifying ourselves before God, but asking for his mercy and for his forgiveness. Because what else is there? What can we say to God that's going to make him so happy that we're roaming the planet? 
What can we say? Even the fathers of the church say, what can we offer to God who is the creator of everything? Even if we were to offer him the world, the entire sphere of the earth, it would merely be his footstool, just for him to put his feet on top of the earth. That's how big God is beyond our understanding. And that's what the fathers of the church say. But they also say, what can we offer him in return is repentance, a change of life, and coming before God to say, I'm sorry, help me, guide me, be with me, and don't forsake or abandon me. In my sinfulness, remove it and replace it with your presence. That is what the crux of Great Lent is all about. And that's why we hear about it today. That's why we hear this great parable and this great example of how we are supposed to enter the church. When we enter, what are we doing? Are we looking at other people? Are we worried about what, uh, you know, what the day is bringing? Or are we coming before God in true understanding and true acknowledgement of the presence of God to say, I'm sorry, help me. We all need it. We all need help. We all need God's mercy. We all need his grace. We all need his forgiveness. But if we fail to take advantage of that in the context of the liturgical services, in the context of confession, as I mentioned last week, then we hear this this great stern uh, command from St. Theophan who says that we cannot experience the fullness of God if we come here and we're distracted and we're thinking of other things or we come uh, come late and we leave early. Who does that for a football game? Who does that for a movie? I mean, people tailgate so that they're there early, right? And they stay late and, you know, all these types of things. And these, you know, we have to get down early because traffic's going to be tough around, you know, Soldier's Field or whatever it is. And people make the adjustments. But when it comes to church, even in the time of the early fathers, they were saying, come on time. And... For the most part, we try, we're here, we're working at it. But the other thing he says too is that just like a, uh, a recipe, when you season whatever the, the meat is, say you have a piece of chicken, you season it, and you don't fully season it. You just kind of put a little bit on there. I mean, I'm sure everybody's watched the Food Network, right? At some point, it's, it's always on. Now it's like the Guy Fieri channel, right? It's, he's on every single show. Maybe it's, I'm the only one that happens to flip that on every once in a while. But many times they'll eat food and they'll say, mm, it's not seasoned enough, or it's over-seasoned. But the under-seasoning, St. Theophon mentions that too, and he says, the under-seasoning of food is the same thing that happens to us when we cut off the ends of the liturgy. We cut off the ends of the liturgical services. We come late, we leave early, and we miss the full flavor. We miss the fullness of God's message to us. And we also say to him, It's not worth enough to me to make the adjustments. All the things that are important to us, we make room for in our lives. We all do, whatever that is. You want to go golfing, if you're a golfing fanatic, you make the time in your schedule. But then if it's something else that you don't want to do, maybe go to your mother-in-law's house or something, oh, I'm so busy, I can't do it. There's things that we make adjustments for. And the church calls us on this day of the beginning of Triodion to make the adjustments in our life, to be here, to focus, to ask God for help, and to pray for ourselves and forget about our surroundings. Forget about what's going on around you. Forget about the baby crying or someone um, coughing behind you and wondering, am I going to get sick? And are they going to go to communion? Because if I have the spoon after them, I'm worried I'm going to get sick. I finish everything at the end. I'm still standing here. Um, I'm fine. So don't worry about those things. Don't be distracted. Don't be distracted by what's around you. Think about yourself. And this is your moment in the context of the liturgy to come to God and to put yourself in his presence. You're in his home. The grace of God is here. Christ died to establish the church and to build the homes that we call churches. So we're here in his presence. We know that he resides in the altar. We have that is not only 
the, the mystical existence of Christ in the altar, but actually the physical existence of Christ in the tabernacle of the altar where we have the body and blood of Christ that ever remains inside the tabernacle on top of the altar table. He's here and he wants us to come to him and to ask him for help and to guide us through the things that we suffer with and the things that hold us back and the stains that are on our bodies and on our souls to present them to him to wash away so that we can be cleansed, so that we can be exalted. Not here, but exalted in the kingdom of heaven. Because everything here is transient. Everything here is temporal and will pass away. But the exaltation that we are looking for in the biblical sense and in the, the theology of the church is the exaltation in the kingdom of heaven. When we come before God and he says, well done, good and faithful servant. But if we judge others around us and if we cr critique and condemn, then we too will be condemned. And I've told this story many times before, but there was a monk who was on his deathbed and he's laying there and all the other monks come in and they're like, you know, Father so-and-so, you were not a good monk. And aren't you worried to die? You never did your chores. You kind of, you know, you're just kind of lazy a little bit and you never really contributed anything to the monastery beyond what you were called to do. And the monk simply said, I never judged anyone. And in that, God will not judge me. And what was realized at that point is that the monks were judging the man who judged no one. So we are called on this day not to judge others, but to look at ourselves and judge ourselves before God's eyes and to make those changes. But we have to know what they are. We have to look at ourselves clearly and come to the temple, the church, with our heads down asking for God's mercy. And in the grace of the church, he takes our chins and lifts them up so that we can look at him. But we must come in the, in the position that we would come if Christ were to come in the church right now. Would we stand if Christ came into the church? Would we stand and just say, oh, there he is, give me a hug. You know, or will we fall down on our knees, on our faces, and say, forgive me, I'm not ready. And who really is ready? So it's a time to prepare ourselves, to ready our souls for great and holy Lent on this day where we come into the church and we are asked to focus on ourselves and to transform ourselves from sinful people into beginning the path closer to Christ. Amen.